Hello, hello, it is Elise Cabre here, songwriting coach at Daughter, here to help you write and record the songs of tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. It really helps me grow this channel. In today's video, I thought it would be really good for me to recap some of the, the topics that I've been talking about over the last few months and create a video that's kind of like an overview of the fundamentals of songwriting. Now, interestingly, lots of these fundamentals are things that I think every songwriter should know, but lots of us don't. So hopefully you will learn something by the end of this video. Before I jump into that, I just wanted to do a quick reminder that my online course, uh, The Song Prescription, is currently on sale. I'm doing a big promo on that at the moment. If you're interested, there is a link in the description of this video. This course is something that I've been working on for the last 12 months, and it is especially focused on helping you navigate those mental blocks that are holding you back in your songwriting. As a songwriting coach, I'm not here to try and make you famous. I believe that that whole process can be really detrimental, but I'm here to remind you about the aspects of songwriting that people often forget. And that is its healing power as a creative outlet. There's been a lot of studies on music as an art therapy, and we really can see how music benefits people in their mental health. So this course that I've created, The Song Prescription, is all about using songwriting as more of a journaling exercise or an out creative outlet to help you process things that you've been going through. If that sounds interesting to you, then please hit the link in the description and check it out for yourself. All right, let's get back to the video. The first of the fundamentals of songwriting that I want to talk about in this video is structure. Now, structure sounds pretty basic, but if you don't really understand how to structure your songs and know the function of each of those sections and why they're structured the way they are, then this is an area that could be letting you down in your songwriting. So I recommend learning the hit song formula. I've got a video all about this, which I'll link in this video. The hit song formula, I know it sounds really formulaic, which a lot of us creatives don't really like, but it's basically just a simple way to structure a song that has been done time and time and time again by the biggest songwriters of all time. Now, by no means do you have to stick to this formula. It's just there as a guideline, um, but understanding it is really going to be a good roadmap for you when you're structuring your songs. For example, if you've got a song and it's sounding super repetitive, if you follow the hit song formula, you'll know that a bridge section, placing a bridge section about two thirds of the way through the song is going to interrupt that repetition and really complement the song and make it hold your listeners attention much better. Or if you're feeling like your song is needing more momentum, it's just not quite getting the energy that you want at the chorus. If we look at the hit song formula, we'll see that a pre-chorus might actually fix this problem because the function of a pre-chorus is to build tension and hype leading into a chorus. So first fundamental in this video is learn the hit song formula, learn how to structure songs properly. Um, and then once you know the rules, you know how to break them. The next fundamental is dynamics. Now, this is one of my favorite tricks in songwriting because it requires just about zero effort on behalf of the songwriter to introduce dynamics. Um, and it can really transform how uh, effective your song is. So when I say dynamics, I'm basically talking about how loud and soft your song is or how low or high in intensity it is. Introducing dynamics into your songwriting could be as simple as playing, if you're a guitarist, playing different uh, your different choruses at different volumes. So a trick that I like to do, especially with those really repetitive songs, is on uh, the second last chorus. So we've just had the verses, the chorus, another verse and another chorus, maybe a bridge. Um, and we're about to do a, like a double chorus outro. I like to play through a whole chorus, but really quietly. It really brings up the intensity when you drop away and, and take those dynamics down. And then once they're down here, you've got all this room to build up for a huge finish. And that can make your song a lot more exciting when you're performing with just you on a guitar. Our next fundamental that I want to talk about is probably the most obvious and arguably the most important, and that is hooks. So our hook is the way we recognize a song. So if I said to you, oops, I did it again, you know exactly what song I'm talking about, right? Because I just sang you the hook. Now a hook is, I like to think about a hook as a song's fingerprint. 
it is unique to that song. So no other song has the same hook and it's the way we identify that song. It is the job of the hook to stand out, to be catchy and to most importantly, be memorable. So listeners, remember your song. Now there's lots of ways to do this, but when I break it down, for me, it comes down to three basic things for writing really good hooks and they are rhythm. So having a catchy rhythm is really important. Simplicity, so keeping things really simple and not over complicating it makes them much more singable and more memorable. And of course, repetition. Now I've recently done two very in-depth videos on hook writing. One is about coming up with hooks and the second one is all about how to then develop that hook into a chorus section. So I, if you haven't seen those videos, I highly recommend you check them out. Last but not least, we have contrast. Now, similar to dynamics, contrast is actually one of the elements that's gonna keep your songs interesting and really bring them to life. It's also what's gonna make your hook stand out and capture your audience's attention. Contrast can be achieved in lots of different ways. Some of the most obvious are having low and high intensity sections. So low intensity choruses, high intensity, intensi sorry, low intensity verses and high intensity choruses. We can also introduce um, contrast in our melodies through having low pitches and high pitches or short notes and long soaring notes. And of course, we can have contrast in the instrumentation that we use. So if you're a music producer or you have access to a band, it'll be where your different instruments come in and out of the song. That's gonna create contrast between those sections. Now, again, I've done a recent video on contrast. So if you'd like to know more information about it, I will put a link up here and you can check that out. Alrighty, so that was a bit of a recap into some of the fundamental aspects of songwriting and a lot of these fundamentals get overlooked. So they're really important for you to be paying attention to and listening out for when you're listening to music. If you found any of the points in this video interesting, I'd love you to let me know in the comments what you've learned um, and really open up the discussion about each of these topics because they are all so important for our songwriting. As I said in the introduction, if you're interested in checking out my online course, now is a really great time to take me up on that because it is um, currently 80% off and that offer won't last long. So if you're interested, click the link in the description and that will um, take you to a page where you can see all the different lessons and all the different modules and everything that you get inside that course. I hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Elise Cabret and happy songwriting. <laughs>